Guess who's back in the house? His click clacking about. I hope that you guys are having a lovely day. I'm trying a different camera and I have no idea how this looks. So I hope that it looks really good. So I just watched episode 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race season 12. And uh, there are so many great moments during this episode. And so, um, previous episode, we had a double Shantae with Jackie Cox and Heidi in Closet or Heidi Aphrodite. I don't know if Heidi has officially changed her name, but as of yesterday, all of her social media still had Heidi in Closet, though I do love Heidi Aphrodite. And the queens go back to the workroom and people are like, yay, top six. So before I get started with my review, I wanted to talk about two things that I actually loved during this episode. One, Rue gave all of the girls such a wonderful compliment and said that this is the best group of girls that Rue has had in a very long time, like a collective group, like, and Rue said that this is like the best top six and she wished that they were the top six forever. What a compliment. And then uh, uh, something else that was really cute is that I love when Rue laughs during like the runway challenges and during the liberation, but for some reason it seemed like Rue was extra giggly this episode. And um, I think it was the last episode with Crystal's outfit where Rue said, oh, Michelle, I think my drugs are starting to kick in. I felt like Rue's drugs were starting to kick in this episode because Rue was just completely giggly and I loved it. So... Jada won last episode and she has three wins and she's tied with Gigi Good for three wins. Incredible. I'm so happy for Jada. Such a cool moment. So for the mini challenge this week, there was the Everybody Loves Puppet Challenge. And sometimes I forget kind of like when a season has ended, what challenges the queens had to go through. And I didn't realize that there hasn't been a puppet challenge since season nine during Sasha Velour's uh, season. And so that was three seasons ago. And uh, Rue said, like, oh, my gosh, like this. I miss this challenge so much. So one thing that I don't know if everybody remembers, but this challenge was named because of Sharon Needles in season four. When Rue said, we're going to have a puppet challenge, Sharon said, everybody loves puppets. And so that's such a cool thing um, that certain traditions stay with the show and certain things have been named by queens and now they're known. Um, like this particular challenge is everybody loves puppets. Uh, so really cool. Um, I loved Crystal and Jackie. And Jackie won the mini challenge and she said that this is her third mini challenge win and hopefully that equals one challenge win. And it would have been so perfect if Jackie, how are you? Uh, thanks for um, coming to my live. I know that was a, a sad moment. Um, it broke my heart really. And so it would have been so perfect if Heidi, or not Heidi, um, <laughs> if Jackie would have won the mini challenge and the maxi challenge, like that would have been such a great moment, but I'll get to that later on. So Jackie wins the mini challenge and because of that, she gets to choose who goes in order for the maxi challenge, which is a one drag queen show. And the guest judge for this particular episode is Whoopi Goldberg, EGOT winner, 
co-host of The View, Whoopi Goldberg. So incredible. And I didn't know this, but Whoopi got her big break for doing a one-woman show on Broadway. Now, I, I think I've seen kind of like bits and pieces of it over the years, but I've actually never seen it. So maybe tomorrow I'm going to watch it uh, just to, um, just, I mean, Whoopi is just like an incredible actress, but just to kind of like experience that moment of a young Whoopi being extremely vulnerable on stage. So I'm going to check it out. And so there's kind of like um, this scramble for queens not to be last. And Jackie puts herself first, which is a very smart move because you don't have to sit through uncomfortable, awkward comedy moments. And Jada is um, picked to go last which is never good um if you do very well it's a good thing but if you bomb or if the person before you does really well it just is not going to look good for you so i was very nervous for jada and i was hoping that she would just kind of like have a grand slam and just knock everyone out of their seats with her delivery and comedic routine because I think sometimes queens forget that they have to be funny during uh, these types of um, acting challenges. And so I wanted to talk about some of my favorite moments actually before the maxi challenge. And the cool thing is that the queens got to one like prep for their one queen show for Whoopi to actually critique them and how cool is it so the first one is how cool is it that the queens get to have a free acting workshop or uh coaching from Whoopi Goldberg it's a the master class that every single actor who's doing a one person show wants like, I was actually taking notes, like, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. Like, how incredible. And Whoopi, whenever she gives advice, uh, she comes from such a place of caring and a place of wisdom because she has seen it all as a actor who has created her own projects Broadway theater in New York and going from struggling actress to EGOT winner to co-host of The View for I think like 12 seasons at this point so that was that was so great so wonderful and um, I'm, I'm just so curious how the Queens felt getting that advice to Jada and her moment with Whoopi, uh, just how tender and beautiful Jada was crying, telling Whoopi what it meant for her to be face to face uh, during their 101, and how she compared Whoopi Goldberg's character, Seely from The Color Purple with what the queens have to endure as a contestant on Drag Race. Celie has to deal with the abuse from Danny Glover's character and then learn to accept herself as a person and go out in the world and experience it on her own. So I thought that was a great comparison. And in the end, Whoopi gave Jada um, such a loving embrace um, it was such a beautiful moment three uh, Rue is asking Crystal um, different uh, dances and if she knew them 
I think she asked her, um, the first one was, do you know what, I think she said the washing machine or something. I don't remember the exact name, but the second one I definitely know was the jerk. Okay, I don't know what that dance move is. I've never seen it, but Crystal, <laughs> Crystal um, is basically demonstrating how someone, how a male um, self pleasures themselves. And that was hilarious. And Whoopi and Rue said, please use that during your one person show. That was hilarious. So Crystal is doing, um, the reason why Rue asked her that is because Crystal is doing a one man exotic dancer show. And they were uh, prepping Crystal to um, really kind of like get into character. And so the fourth moment before the Max Challenge was Heidi is talking about what she's going to do. And she's going to talk about her family during the Maxi Challenge. And she's about to kind of like tell a story about the first time she did drag. And Jackie says, oh, here we go. She's going to tell us a story about Ram Sewer. And she is the Rose Nyland of season 12. And Jada says, who's Rose Nyland? The room <laughs> erupts in like chatter. And people are like, are you serious? Do you not know who Rose Nyland is? And the person that we don't speak of says Golden Girls. And Jada's reaction is so hilarious in the confessional. She says, I thought this was some bitch from New York that they knew. <laughs> it was season 12, who the F is Heather moment. And I, I, I loved it. It was hilarious. So funny. And the fifth moment, literally right before the maxi challenge, we get a shot of Dahlia in her broccoli suit. I hope Dahlia every time she performs post coronavirus that she's wearing a broccoli suit she has to milk this opportunity as much as she can which i'm i feel like she's not the type of person that would do that like i've been trying to check her social media to see if she's like mentioning the broccoli suit and she's not at all which is such a mistake look if i was her i Every time you would see me, I would be in a broccoli suit or have broccoli earrings or something. Total missed opportunities. Um, and so we get to the uh, One Queen shows. Jackie leads them off. And she is so incredible. She tells, and she actually, I, I'm not sure what she was going to do at first, uh, but she scraps what she was going to do as what she rehearsed with Whoopi and Rue. And she's going to tell a story about her mother and father. And I thought it was so brilliant, the setup that she had, that she has two stools and she has um, eyeglasses on top of the stools and they're supposed to represent her mother and father, and they're far apart to represent them getting a divorce. So clever. And she actually uses two different voices and has two different expressions for her mother and father. And that was such a great moment. It almost felt like she has done this before and so I really loved her really introducing us into this maxi challenge so my favorites overall were Jackie, Crystal, Gigi and the girl who we do not talk about so the girl who we do not talk about she actually went over 
and her time was about 17 minutes, which I complete, and, and apparently she didn't even know that she went over. And it's so crazy that um, because she is a theater queen, that for her, five minutes feels more like 20 minutes. And for her to not realize it, Michelle called it selfish, but I think that it just feels natural if you live on stage and you host frequently, um, you're in front of a live audience frequently. Um, but I think I was most impressed by Crystal. Every kind of like 10 seconds, there was a funny moment with Crystal and her timing was perfect. I, 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 I laughed so hard with Crystal um, and I love that not only did she have this character that was well thought out, but she was also selling something. The product was fake, of course, um, but it made it more believable and I loved it. And there were so many great lines, uh, so many great references and uh, so many nods to pop culture. So Crystal, I knew she would be in the top this episode and well deserved for Crystal because uh, her, I actually can't believe that she hasn't had um, a win. However, this was the time that I knew that she was going to win. Okay, so my least two favorites were Jada and Heidi. I think their nerves got the best of them. However, with Jada, I actually thought that her delivery was strong, but there were moments where I don't know if people knew if they should laugh or if they kind of like should feel pity for her in the story. And so I think she needed just kind of like stronger um, comedic points, or I guess like places that guided us. And I don't know if she really thought that out as much as she should have. So for the runway, the category is the color purple, which is, um, such a cool category to have. And I must say that I really loved and enjoyed everyone's runway. So the people that kind of like shocked me the most were Jackie. Uh, Jackie was like a, she was given like club kid realness. And I, I so loved that it, was, it kind of reminded me of Monique Hart and her kind of like um, the animal-esque fashions that she does. And the costume might have been designed by the same person that does her costumes. And I love that she kind of like revealed a tongue from the mouth of the garment and there was a molly on it, which everyone picked up on. Molly, you and Danger Girl reference, which was so hilarious. Um, I think that was just a coincidence, uh, but it would be so cool if she actually included that after learning that Whoopi was there. And probably my favorite um, was Crystal. So there is a black artist that creates sound suits. And they are just so incredible. And I think he's been, he's been around for like 10 years. And it is just so cool to see these movements. And I love to see them in spaces outside of museums. And so the artists will sometimes go to like festivals. And the 
the suits almost become instruments and in that the material will will make certain sounds when the person inside the suit moves um the the, the suits tend to be um more fringe like than what crystal did crystal had kind of like a thrift store cut out pattern version of it but it was still really cool and the i love the makeup and just perfection loved it and i love the kind of like obscure reference to the artist and uh jada just gave us kind of like this high couture hatchet moment and it almost um looked like Gigi's buttons and bows look. Um, it was the same silhouette and kind of like the same idea, but of course Jada already had this um, look, but it was so similar to Gigi's look. Uh, but I love the train in the back. I love the hat um, and the slip down uh, hair, which was really beautiful. And Gigi as Daphne from Scooby-Doo, uh, but kind of like a, a high couture version of Daphne. I love the reference. Um, it, it looked almost too simple uh, side by side with the other girls, um, but I, I enjoyed it. And then Heidi just uh, gave kind of like traditional pageant gown and so again like compared to everyone else Heidi and Gigi's looks were very simple compared to the other girls but they were still lovely and we learn that Jackie Gigi and the girl who we do not mention are safe Crystal wins the challenge and unfortunately, the two pageant queens, Heidi and Jada, are in the bottom. And I was like, no, um, I didn't realize this, but this was Heidi's fourth time in the bottom. And so I had an idea kind of like going in, there are very few people that will survive after a fourth lip sync. And I just had a gut feeling that Jada would kind of win this. Jada has been doing drag a lot longer than Heidi and Jada is pageant royalty at this point. And just kind of like looking at them, Jada looked like she was mentally prepared like she had laser sharp focus and she didn't look nervous to me. Like she looked like she was ready to just kind of like destroy Heidi on the stage. And so the song that they performed to was Prince's 1999, which is such an unusual song. Like this is um, the second male song that we've had this season. Uh, although there are kind of like female um, vocals on this song, but it's it's a it's a print song. Jada, thirty seconds in, takes off that slip down hair, hat, and she has like a short do on, and with the short do, it really was kind of like in the style of Prince's hair. So I love that. And we really got what I would expect the female version of Prince to do on a stage performing to that song. And I loved it. Um, Jada is such a wonderful performer and Heidi is an exceptional performer, but anyone that can outshine Heidi I have to give it to them so the wig reveal I think was kind of like too soon but I know that you know Bob says this all the time that 
when RuPaul says that you have to lip sync for your life, it feels as if you're going to die. And so it was a little too soon, but I think in that moment, like you're kind of, you're trying to do whatever you can to survive. And so even though like, I think it was kind of like too soon to reveal, but I loved it. And actually like, because it was in the kind of like, um, what Prince's hair looks like. I guess it wasn't too soon. Maybe it was like the best time to do it. Um, but Jada, um, after the performance, Rue says that Jada will be staying in the competition, um, which, and this will be actually the perfect time for like a double save, but we had one the previous episode, but this was the time to do a double save because even though Jada really sold it. I loved everything that Heidi was doing as well. And the a bit of controversy from the last episode, a lot of people stated that Heidi was the clear winner from last week's lip sync performance. Um, that even kind of like in the uh, the um, the after show with Bob, Bob says that, you know, like Heidi won hands down and that this was not a time to do the double save. I'm curious what you guys think. If you guys think that it was a deserving double save, but this would have been the time to actually do a double save because um, Heidi is such an incredible performer, but um, I do think they were strong performances though. And so we have to say goodbye to Heidi. Um, I'm gonna, after, after this video, I'm gonna see if she has officially changed her name, but I doubt it. Um, but I do like the sound, sound of Heidi Aphrodite. And so tell me what you guys think about the lip sync. Um, would you have loved to see a double save tonight? I know I would have. Um, who was your favorite um, who had the, the best look on the runway? It's kind of tricky for me. Um, I would say it's either between Jackie and Crystal, who have, like, the best looks of the night. Everyone kind of, like, looked good, but either Jackie or Crystal had, like, the top looks of the night. And what were some of your other uh, favorite moments from the night. I hope that you guys are being safe wherever you are. It is getting warm. It is, it was like 80 degrees in LA today. And that's why I'm wearing this tank top because it's so hot. But I'm kind of glad I'm not on the East Coast because I know the humidity is horrible right now. So if you guys are on the East Coast, I hope that you are staying inside uh, because humidity is no joke. All right, guys, uh, let me know your thoughts. Um, if this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. And hit like and subscribe uh, so you can stay up to date with every time that I drop a video. And um, I'm going to actually post one or two videos between today and tomorrow so uh stay tuned for those have a wonderful day guys besos I can figure out. I don't know how to stop this. I have a new camera and I don't know how to end this. Gosh, I'm still on. You guys. <laughs> I don't know how to... 
I don't know how to end this. This is hilarious. I really don't know how to do this.